I've been using the Essential phone for a while now, and the only clear chink in its armor is the camera. Now, the camera, when you think you're looking at camera samples and you're just using a camera, if it doesn't come out well, you just think that the camera's bad. You, you assume the hardware is bad, everything behind it is flawed. It's just as much about hardware as it is about software now, and the Pixel 2 proves it. Uh, if you've seen any sample shots from Pixel 2, you know how good uh, that software makes the camera look and how much the uh, final results are altered. Uh, and this carries over to the Essential Phone. So the Essential Phone has a very clunky app. The app for the camera, uh, it's slow, it doesn't work well, and the final results are heavily skewed because of it. Uh, and one thing that people started to find out was that you could port the Google app over to the Essential Phone which is awesome because uh, I thought, you know what, it's finally a cool uh, comparison to see how much software can affect the final results of a phone. So in this comparison, what I'm gonna be doing is comparing shots I took using the Essential Camera, Essential Stock uh, Camera app, uh, and shots I took using Google's camera app uh, that I've loaded onto this phone. Now you can do this uh, fairly easily. It's just an APK file you can download and install onto your phone. However, uh, it's a little bit crashy and buggy and it's sketchy for sure. So, uh, you know, be, be careful when using this. That's all I can say. Uh, so let's get into the comparison and I'll tell you my thoughts about everything at the end. So let's get right into it. So starting off with the first picture, uh, what we see is that both are fairly similar. You couldn't really tell that they were taken from a different app. They look very similar. One thing that I do notice though is below the sunglasses, we see that the granite has a little bit more of uh, black grain. You can see a lot more blacks in the Essentials camera, whereas the Google camera, you see a little bit less. Uh, so it kind of is uh, up for toss which one is better. I personally prefer the Google camera in this instance, but uh, you know, there's no denying the Essential camera has a little bit more uh, detail there with those blacks. Moving on here, I think that the Google camera definitely looks better. Uh, the colors are a lot more darker, they're more accurate, uh, and they just look a lot better in my opinion. Even in the background, uh, the colors look a lot more vivid, whereas in the Essential Phones uh, camera, you know, everything looks a lot more dull. Uh, and it does give you a little bit more detail if you zoom in towards the uh, bottom edges or something, but uh, the color representation isn't the best. So in this case, also, I think the Google camera has the better photo. Once again, we see the similar trend from the last photo. Uh, the Google camera has these darker colors that make the entire picture look a lot more realistic to me, uh, a little bit more saturated, whereas the essential cam looks a lot lighter. Uh, it looks like the exposure is up just a little bit too much. Just look at the reflection in the phone. You can see the uh, reflection of my shirt a lot more clearly in the essential camera whereas you can't in the Google camera. So this might come useful depending on the type of photography you're doing. But in my case, I prefer less shadows uh, and the Google camera does that. So I think this one also, the Google camera takes away. Starting off while looking at these two photos, you kind of think that they're very similar to each other. However, they're not. Let me point out the main difference. One is the exposure. So look at the uh, leaf right above it to the right. Uh, just a little bit to the right in the center of the photo frame you guys can see that on the essential camera Everything just seems a lot well, just white and overexposed Whereas look at the Google camera and it manages to keep all the detail in the background Whereas the essential cam manages to keep none of it. It just washes everything out Not to mention the colors in the Google camera pick up so much more accurately Just look at how the darker colors of the leaf uh, are so much more apparent towards the middle of the leaf uh, on the Google camera, whereas uh, Essential doesn't do that good of a job. It kind of looks like it's just very flat. I, I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but the colors just look a lot more pleasing on the Google camera. However, you know, you do get a little bit more detail on the Essential camera, but I kind of prefer the better exposure and the colors of the Google camera. So I think this one is also the Google camera. So at this point, I think I'm starting to notice a trend, and that trend is that the Google camera managed to keep colors darker and a little bit more realistic, uh, whereas the essential camera seems a little bit washed out. The colors are a lot lighter. Now, some people do like that look over the you know more saturated, vivid look, but I prefer the darker colors with the more saturation. So uh, when we look at this, we see that the Google camera has a slightly warmer tone. Look at the uh, whites in the background behind the flowers and leaves. You guys can see that the essential camera has a slightly less uh, yellowish hue, whereas the Google camera does. 
However, when we look at the leaves um, and the um, flowers, you guys don't see that much of a difference in temperature, but that is definitely there, and that can be seen with the whites in the background. And the contrast, I think uh, it just works perfectly for the Google camera, uh, and it just highlights the details of those flowers and the uh, leaves a lot better than the essential camera. So again, I think the essential camera uh, doesn't do as well as the Google camera on this one. So Google camera takes it again. So now this is the first photo where I see an actual real difference of, uh, you know, where I would uh, actually prefer to use the Google camera app. So just look at the details on the Google camera. You can uh, see so much more. And if I showed this to anybody else and I told them that these were taken from two different phones, I don't think anybody would disagree. I don't think anybody would say that these two photos look like they've come from the same exact phone. Just look at the lack of detail on the essential phones camera. It just kind of astonishes me. Uh, and not to mention, it has a very greenish hue uh, in comparison to the reddish one of the Google camera. Uh, the Google camera actually represents it a lot better. The, it, the tree is slightly on the you know, reddish side, so the essential camera doesn't even get the white balance right with a very greenish white instead of being a lot more reddish. So uh, again, I think the Google camera just is excellent here as well. So now this is a indoor shot for both the Essential and Google camera, and both of them look very similar, to be very honest with you. Uh, this wasn't a very dark room. It was decently lit, so it wasn't dark, but, uh, you know, you could see some details here and there. Uh, and I really don't notice anything. There's not too much noise in both of the photos. Uh, they managed to keep the details fairly well. The Google camera kind of keeps the text a little bit bolder. If you just see under the display where MacBook Air is written, the text seems a little bit more uh, clear to read, whereas the MacBook Air seems like, uh, I'm sorry, on the essential phone, it seems like MacBook Air is written a lot more thin, uh, looking side by side, but that's just grasping its straws. Both the photos look very similar, and uh, I think here we're going to call it a tie. So let's move on to the next photo. Now, this is one place where I was surprised. I was expecting the Google camera app to do portraits a lot better, uh, and in a way it does. However, in a way it doesn't. So I took the, uh, I took portrait self uh, photos uh, on both the Essential and Google camera and uh, one thing that I noticed was that the Essential camera did a lot better at making the background look natural. The bokeh just looks a lot more natural than the Google camera. The Google camera kind of feels like it's an artificial bokeh and you can clearly tell like it was somewhat edited out uh, whereas the Essential feels a lot more natural and you could edit this and make it look more blurry but this was the stock setting so I maintained that and I didn't uh, you know increase the blur of the background. And honestly, I think the essential camera's photo came out a lot better here, uh, and I would prefer that over the Google camera's portrait app. So now looking at uh, some photos of flowers where we see a lot more variances in color, uh, one thing that I notice is that it's a give and take. So the essential camera doesn't do as well with the light. It kind of darkens everything out. However, you have some more detail here. Whereas the Google camera, it makes everything look a little bit brighter. The background looks a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, it, it looks better than it does on the essential camera. It doesn't look as blurred out and fuzzy. Uh, not to mention that the colors look a lot more realistic here. Uh, the essentials doesn't look as much. You know, I, seeing these in person and comparing them to the photos, uh, the essential really doesn't look the way the Google does. So I think the Google camera takes it again here. Now, this is an interesting toss-up. So I was, uh, I took this photo a few times on both camera apps and in the end, I honestly think it comes down to personal preference with this one because some people will love the dark, uh, darker colors of the essential camera, whereas the Google camera is a lot more brighter and it kind of pops the colors a lot more. So that kind of, you know, it gives it a little bit of a brighter and more cheery vibe, if you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, but both of them maintain the same amount of detail. There's no noise. There's no... Uh, no kind of uh, dullness in the photo. It is a little bit darker on the essential, but there's no dull points there. So uh, I think that uh, the essential camera is, uh, the, my personal choice is the Google camera, but I wouldn't blame anybody if they chose the essential camera for this particular shot. Now, moving on to the front camera, here we also see some differences. And, uh, you know, you, I, I see the same trend again and again. Google uh, exposes the photo a lot better. It makes colors look a lot darker. Uh, and it just makes sure that the background has a lot as, as much detail as possible and it's not washed out with the light. Uh, if you look at the background on the essential camera, especially to the top right, it's, it's just completely whited out, it's completely washed out. You see a lot more on the Google camera, not to mention just the details of my face, they don't look as washed out, uh, and there's a, it's just a lot more accurate. So I think that personally, the Google camera, again, 
does a lot better. Uh, and here's a neat gimmick. So the Google camera app does allow you to take front portrait mode selfies and that was a very cool touch. So here's just a side-by-side -side comparison of the say of a similar photo. Uh, one thing you do notice is it's not as good as the Google Pixels app. It doesn't do as well as the job blurring out my hair. Uh, and it even doesn't manage to blur out my shirt properly, which is a very different color clearly from the background. So uh, it's not the best, but you have that option if you want it. So that's pretty cool that they were able to, you know, make it work at a decent level. Now, again, looking at the indoor front cameras in both, uh, the performance seems fairly similar. One thing I do notice is that, uh, you know, the Google camera is just a little bit more brighter, but again, uh, details seem to be fairly similar on both, uh, and I'm it's equally as decent. I'm not, neither of these are good, but I think that they they're fairly okay for what they are. So this was in a darker environment, and uh, the noise is very apparent, and I just can't get over that. So uh, I, this is just a tie again for me. Moving on for an indoor rear camera shot. Uh, again, Essential, you know, does its overexposure and, you know, washing out of colors, but what it does manage to do is keep a lot more detail. So you guys can see the Galaxy Note 8 here, and it has the always-on display running, uh, and you can see that starry effect that the uh, Essential phone manages to keep in the uh, photo that is on the Note 8. So the always-on display has the starry effect, uh, and despite not having the details of anything else properly down, the exposure is adjusted perfectly for you to see that. Whereas when you look at the Google camera, everything else is a lot more clearer. Just compare the times. Uh, the way the time is displayed on both of these devices is a huge difference. You know, the Google camera is a lot more legible. It's a lot more detailed, but you miss out that whole portion of that starry uh, back thing. And it kind of uh, bugs me. Noise, different story. There's a lot more noise on the essential camera. Just look at... Uh, the background on the right, just look towards the right of the Galaxy Note 8 and oh my god, the noise is so apparently, you know, it's just visible very clearly. And you can see a lot more detail in the background on my, uh, on my computer as well. So you guys can clearly see what's on the display on the Google camera phone, whereas you can't on the essential camera. So uh, it's a very clear toss up here that Google does such a better job at exposure, but it does sometimes, you know, cut out details. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but whatever is in frame is always good looking and in focus. So that's a good thing. So let me move on. So looking at this photo, uh, things kind of confuse me because um, both of them look fairly similar. But when I zoomed in, what I noticed was that Essential kept a little bit more detail, uh, whereas Google didn't. And But when I zoom out, overall, the photo looks a little bit better to me from the Google camera, whereas it looks kind of... Uh, just not as good with the essential camera. I don't know what exactly it is, but I think because there's no real definitive answer for which one looks better, uh, I'm gonna give this one a tie. All right guys, so this is the essential phone's rear camera and uh, this is the 4K setting, highest setting, and it's on the left side. The Google camera is on the right side. Let me know what the two look like. Okay guys, so this is the Google camera on the right now. Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. One thing I'm noticing is that during video, it's a little bit hard to focus. All right guys, so we have the essential camera here on the left side and now both of these are gonna be on their highest settings. So let me know what you guys think about the brightness, the color, the clarity and all that. All right guys, so this is the Google camera now and the Google camera is on the right side. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the brightness, the color and everything. What are the details looking like? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. All right guys, so this is the indoor camera test of the Essential Phone uh, own camera app, the stock app. So this is low lighting and indoor. So this is my desk and uh, this is the essential phone stock app. So this is on the left. The Google app was on the right. Uh, and I'm sorry that the audio and the video aren't gonna sync up. I have to do this two separate times and I know that the motion is not gonna be straightforward. So let me know what you think about the quality and if you can tell the difference between any details. Let me know down in the comments below. So guys, for the final comparison, we have the Google stock camera uh, 
on the right side over here and this is uh, the what the indoor low light selfie looks like so from the last time I can tell it's a huge huge difference if you saw my comparison with the OnePlus 5T uh, you saw that the camera app in the low light same lighting was pathetic you couldn't even see my face this is doing a lot better uh, and I think that is a much better thing <clears throat> so uh, here on the other side is the one from the stock essential app so let me know what you think about that uh, down in the comments below so looking at that the final results are very interesting and I was actually surprised to see how big of a difference software can make and uh, something that was in my mind for a while that uh, software has kind of changed the game with camera uh, was proven true today to me and it was proven true because the same hardware pulled such different shots in so many conditions uh, and it was just amazing to see. Now uh, the Google camera app has its issues, it wasn't perfect so while you guys saw a lot of good shots from it, there was issues with video especially. Uh, whenever I took a video and I finished it, when I hit the end video button, uh, I took about six videos that got deleted and uh, what happens is you have to give the Google camera app time to finish processing and then it'll get properly saved. If you exit the app before it's done processing or you move on to some other task, the video clip is gone for some reason. So, I mean, it's obviously a side-loaded app, so it's not gonna be stable, it's gonna have its issues, but uh, uh, what I'm leading up to here is that uh, there's a few things about the Google Camera app that aren't just right for this uh, for now. Uh, now, this was just a basic version of it. You can get a much better in-depth version that works a lot better uh, if you root your phone and do all that, but I'm really just not into that. I don't want to do that to this phone. Uh, and that's uh, why I dealt with some issues. And one of the bigger issues I also saw was that uh, portrait mode wasn't an easy just click and it's there. You have to do this weird thing where you uh, move the phone up. You, you focus on the target. So if my hand is the target here, what I'd have to do is I have to bring it into focus and then uh, take it up like a, a smooth upward motion and if you make if you move it too fast if you shake it or anything the photo gets canceled so it's hard to get good shots quickly out of this but one good thing was that the shutter lag is very minimal um, so there wasn't that much shutter lag another issue with the Google camera app was that uh, it's not very well optimized for this phone so you know the delete if you go to view a photo directly from the camera app uh, the delete button and all that would, uh, you know, be hidden. It was kind of under the essential phones, you know, multi the, ta the taskbar at the bottom. So uh, you couldn't you really use those. So you'd have to get out of that camera app, go into the photos app uh, on the essential camera, uh, essential cameras photos app, and then you could access the photos and view them and delete them if you wanted to. So uh, it's just something that you have to keep in mind. And what I was building up to here is that right now, I don't think you guys should install the Google camera app. Uh, because it's just not as stable. One thing I'm very happy about though is I'm looking forward to what the camera app will look like once it's updated. So they're working on updates and uh, apparently users who are on 8.1 are already saying that it's much better than the current version. And uh, the Essential Phones app is fully updated. It does have the auto HDR features and everything going for it. So, uh, you know, it's the most up-to-date version right now that's uh, available to the public, uh, which is not the beta. So definitely something that you got to keep in mind is that the difference isn't too big. And I'm sure that with a few more software tweaks and upgrades, uh, they can easily fix the shutter lag. They can make the photos look a lot better uh, and hopefully make the uh, video quality a lot better. So you guys saw that the video quality was really, really bad. Uh, you know, especially in indoors, you couldn't see anything. The lighting was horrible. Uh, and I, that's something that I'm very impressed to see that it's not a hardware issue. It's a software issue. So once those get fixed up, uh, you know, the Essentials camera should be very good. It should be a very decent shooter and it shouldn't have too many issues. Uh, a few differences between the Essential camera's uh, results and the Google camera results were uh, Essential camera was washing out the images. The colors were a little bit dull and, uh, you know, the exposure was uh, iffy, whereas uh, the Google camera app, it was using HDR really nicely. It was making sure that all the parts of the photos were exposed correctly. Uh, and it was a very interesting result to see. The uh, photos looked a lot darker, the colors were a lot nicer, and uh, the Google camera tended to have a slightly warmer t uh, hue, but it looked very natural. It didn't look very obvious. You could only tell if you had the two photos side by side. So, uh, you know what? The Google camera app definitely exceeded the expectations I had for it. So rounding off, I think that uh, I'm very impressed with Essential right now because the hardware is good. 
but the software isn't. So let's just wait and see what the software is like. And uh, I'll make another video comparing the 8.1 uh, or whatever update they finally decided to push out to the public. Uh, I will not be using the beta. I will not do a comparison with the beta because things are still changing. Uh, and, you know, I don't really th see the value in doing that. However, if you guys do want to see one on the beta, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, and I can make that for you if you want. However, I will... I'll be making one once the full software is out and I'll compare the Google camera app to that again to see what the results are like and if the camera app has actually done better. So uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like that and uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.